Hey everyone, this is Tim here at InstaCluster. Uh, today I'm joined by InstaCluster co-founder and CTO, Ben Bromhead. Ben, thanks for joining me. G'day, thanks for having me. Mate, very exciting to, to have you to, to talk about uh, something that's been a big, making a lot of noise in the, in the market at the moment, and that is the new release of Cassandra 4.0. So um, Ben being uh, the Cassandra master of, of InstaCluster, I wanted to get you on to, to get your insight into this, this new update and um, to get your thoughts on, on what this means for the, for the broader community. Yeah, no, I, I'm su super pumped about this one, um, actually. And technically we're just in beta at the moment. So, uh, you know, don't quite go rush it out into production yet, but um, Speaking of, of production, you know, I think this is kind of shaping up to be uh, one of the most battle tested, uh, you know, rock solid, stable um, dot zero releases um, that we've seen from the community um, since the project uh, kind of kicked off. Right. Um, so super excited about that. Um, <clears throat> there's also been a ton of improvements that have kind of gone into it behind the scenes um, as well. More than more than happy to kind of cover uh, that off, but I think um, f for me, what I'm most excited about is just seeing the process the community went through um, to get this release out. You know, it, it has been a few years between drinks in terms of you know major versions. Um, mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I, th I think a few people sort of prematurely reported the, the death of the Cassandra project. Um, okay. But you know, really, really, what it was is you know the community was taking a step back and saying, "Hey, what's what's important to us as operators, people that have to run this stuff in production, uh, yeah. and that's properties like stability and correctness, um, you know, and, and those kind of core tenants as well, right? So you know, I think 4.0 is really shaping up um, to kind of be the culmination of those efforts um, and the new process that we've kind of put everything through. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's kind of that's what I'm most excited about. Um, is, is seeing that process in action um, and seeing the results that it kind of gets. Yeah, okay. Yeah, awesome, man. And, and because I, th I think for me and, and a lot of, uh, you know, practitioners out, out there today, you know, Cassandra, you know, when you think about the core tenants and, and the core benefits that it brings, it's all about high scalability and, and resilience, right? And so mm -hmm. I guess w when you're looking at, um, you know, the what 4.0 and and you know the future kind of mm -hmm. offers offers the technology what are what is making this the most uh, the most stable uh, version, version of it? yeah so so there's there's been some very concrete things um that the community has has done um around that and you know there's there's plenty of blogs out there that'll kind of cover it in super detail but i'll kind of go into it a little bit Mm -hmm. um you know and that is a focus on improving the ability to replay workloads and record workloads as they happen um on the cluster which is which is absolutely fundamental to being able to um find bugs that are very hard to reproduce um it's mm -hmm. absolutely fundamental to testing against known edge cases and known previous bugs as well so being able to replay those workloads super super important um as well uh, plus, it has the added benefit of just making it way easier um, for you as a user of Cassandra to, you know, test workloads, test improvements, test changes to configuration, right? So we're yeah. really, really improving, um, you know, one of those core tenants of repeatability when it comes to, you know, testing and software development. Uh, the other ones as well, and, and this is kind of where we start to get a little bit more esoteric and a little bit more into, you know, kind of the computer science space, but... Um, there's been a, a ton of work that's kind of happened on um, property-based testing. Um, so particularly the introduction of the um, the Quick Theories library. So that uh, what that allows um, people, and we're, we're kind of going right at, down into the weeds here, but you know, the benefit for understanding how this all works um, is that you have a lot more assurance in, in how Cassandra works, right? And so Quick Theories, mm -hmm. what it does, um, is it allows you to kind of define on, on a test level um, an input space and just say, hey, you know, we're expecting numbers between, you know, one and 10 in this particular field. Um, and it'll go through and generate automatically a bunch of edge cases and make it very, very easy to kind of replay those, right? So it's kind of like, uh, almost think about it as almost like intelligent um, buzzing, if anyone's kind of familiar with that in the testing space. Um, speaking of buzzing, there's also been um, a ton more work kind of putting that into play 
um, for Cassandra as well. You know, a bunch of fuzzing, um, a bunch of property-based testing, um, and also a bunch of fault um, injection as well, right? So deliberately causing faults within, um, you know, Cassandra itself, and then seeing how it behaves and heals as a distributed system, right? Um, okay. You know, having said all this, you know, there's been a ton of effort that's gone into this. You know, it's software, we'll still see bugs, we'll still look at those, we'll still find those and fix those in, you know, um, as quickly as we can. But mm. in terms of kind of raising the bar, uh, you know, I, I think the community has done an amazing job with this. Okay, awesome. And for the un un uninitiated fuzzing, fuzzing, can you? Yeah, fuzzing, I, it, sounds, it sounds a bit odd, but honestly, it just, it, it, it really comes down to, you know, throwing a bunch of garbage at it and seeing what happens, right? So, okay. you know, throwing a bunch of garbage, okay. being able to uh, record um, where, where you got up to, how you generated that garbage and making sure it's replayable. Like, you know, it, it's not quite as um, simple as I make it sound. Um, but it's really, really good for kind of finding those edge cases uh, and some of those things that the developers might not have thought about, but, you know, could happen out in the wild. So it just makes for a much more robust system. Are there any um, key kind of advances that you'd highlight um, that have been you know, talked about for this latest release with regards to scaling? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, you know, there's been a number of kind of core changes um, in, in the project that have, have kind of paid off in a few key areas. Um, so there's been a, a real further push to adopt um, the uh, the Netty Performance Networking Library um, throughout the rest of kind of uh, Cassandra as a, as a project. It's been used for some areas, but it's now being a lot more broadly used. Mm -hmm. um, and because it is a high performance networking library, um, it has brought in some added benefits, um, you know, kind of like, you know, zero copy streaming, right? So that's where, you know, um, when Cassandra uh, starts up a new node, so you're adding a new node to that that cluster. The existing nodes, um, what when they start to provide data back to the node that's joining, right? So you know that new node will join, be like, hey, I need some data to serve some requests. The other nodes will be like, all right, here's the data. That takes time. That takes um, resources. You know, for the existing nodes to read that from disk copy it into memory and then send it over the network, right? And of course, mm -hmm. you know, if your cluster's under load, and it generally is sometimes when people want to scale up, uh, you know, that adds, you know, even more load to the cluster and can sometimes put it into a dangerous situation. So with zero copy streaming, what that means is we kind of short circuit or remove one of those steps around, um, you know, having to copy it into memory effectively twice, right? So, you know, a copy still does occur. Um, yeah. But, you know, it, it's kind of we're getting out of the critical path in, in, in that way. That's that's my very high level layman's, yeah, <laughs> uh, no. you know, description of zero copy streaming. Um, there's that's a little bit that kind of goes, goes into it. Um, but what it does is it means that, you know, when you go to scale up and you go to stream, you know, those streams are going to be a heck of a lot quicker, um, less load on the existing um, infrastructure. Uh, it also means that things like, um, you know, repairs can be a little bit quicker as well, streaming that that information about. Um, and, you know, we're also seeing reductions um, in, you know, client request latency, not mm -hmm. super related to zero copy streaming, but still related to the improvements that that Netty library has kind of um, brought the project. So, um, you know, not just some great improvements on, you know, the, um, the kind of correctness side and the testing side, uh, you know, all our end users should see some uh, nice little performance boosts as well, which is always a good thing. Another complexity with regards to, to running Cassandra in production that, you know, when we're talking to existing users, especially is around observability um, and, and monitoring of, you know, the mm -hmm. different metrics within Cassandra that you should care about uh, in a production scenario. So I've, I've just through a little bit of research, I've heard a, a few whispers um, that 4.0 is going to going to bring a, a richer tool set out of the box. Um, can you maybe share a little bit of insight uh, around around that area? Yeah, definitely. So you kind of kind of what I would say is you know the initial or the beginnings or the the, the seedling um, of kind of a new approach to getting information, um, operational information in particular out of Cassandra uh, and kind of into, you know, end users' hands, right? Um, and, you know, one of those improvements uh, is virtual tables, right? So mm -hmm. for those that are familiar with, you know, relational databases, a number of them expose virtual tables, which is, 
you know, it kind of just looks like a normal Cassandra table, but, you know, instead of having data, it'll have things like, you know, request latency, um, you know, garbage collection times. So it makes it a lot easier to integrate that information into the drivers and the drivers can start to kind of do stuff with that. In fact, um, a, a few years ago, there was a really, really interesting paper around someone who kind of, you know, did that in a bit of a, a working um, proof of concept. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, by exposing things like um how full uh you know the jvm heap so how much how much memory cassandra is using on the java heap at the moment um by kind of exposing that to the the end client what the client could do is then go hey that node has real or that replica um has quite a full heap i'm actually going to route my request to this other replica because it's less likely to have a, G a garbage collection pause at this time right so mm -hmm. you can start mm -hmm. to see how by bringing virtual tables, exposing that information, you know, the, the clients can start to become, um, and the drivers can be a little bit more smarter um, okay. about what they do with things. Plus, you know, you can also start to build observability tools in with that as well. Yeah, and it, so it sounds like that also ties in then with the overall, with the overarching theme of, of stability of the, the new, this new release, right? Definitely. And I, I think, you know, not only is it about stability, you know, I would probably argue in terms of, uh, you know, it, it's it's a lot more enterprise ready, right? You know, especially when you yeah. look at um, that audit logging, that traffic replay, you know, they're all big box ticking items, um, mm. you know, for if you have SOX or PCI or GDPR um, kind of compliance requirements. Outside of these, these areas of scalability and, and resilience in the reach, reach of you know tool set sort of out of the box mm -hmm. with with this latest release so there are any other things you you think is important to highlight of the, the latest release um yeah i mean there's certainly going to be some a additional things that will pay off in later versions um so i certainly think you know the support for uh java 11 which comes with um zgc or, or, or the z garbage collector the Z garbage collector, depending on how you want to <laughs> you want to do that. Um, I think that'll be really exciting. Um, there's been some interesting blog posts already around how the beta is performing. Um, you know, with different garbage collectors that are enabled um, in, in Java 11. So I, I think that'll be exciting to see as well. And, and you know, I think you know anyone that's had to run um, Cassandra in production knows that you know fighting uh, you know the JVM and fighting the garbage collector is something of you know, a bit of a, a, a black hole or a black box in terms of, um, you know, understanding what's kind of going on. Mm. Um, and so, you know, making that simpler, um, you know, enabling other options, better performing options, um, it's just going to be a huge win for people. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Ben, I guess, you know, going back to, to the start of InstaCluster, back in, you know, if you can cast your mind back to, to 2012 or 2011 when it was, um, you know, but a, a thought between, you know, you and Adam and a, a couple of other guys. What was it about Apache Cassandra that you thought would be, you could make a business out of? First drew, drew us to it was it, it solved some interesting problems around how, how do you work with data that is spread across different geographies, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and how do you do that in uh, an easy to reason about way. How do you do that in an effective way? And I think, you know, what we saw was that the Cassandra model, um, you know, that that true active active deployment model, um, you know, that 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 kind of, um, I guess, where it, model where every node is a primary um, and can service any request. You know, it, it kind of, you know, that real Dynamo model kind of really was something that was very attractive to it from a simplicity perspective. And then the fact that it treated um, geographical awareness and replication as a first class citizen. So it meant that you as a developer had to think about um, how is my data getting replica um, uh, replicated? Yeah, how, am I, how is my data getting replicated? Um, but not only how is it getting replicated, but what do I do in the case of, you know, one of those replicas is down? Like you have to think about that at the query level. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like it's a little bit of overhead that you've got to pay up front. A lot of databases kind of abstract that and say, oh, you don't need to think about that. But, you know, in reality, you end up having a much more operationally simpler um, experience when you do think about that upfront as a developer. And we first started using Cassandra actually working um, on, on a completely different problem than, than what InstaCluster was, a completely different, you know, startup idea and 
uh, and that kind of thing. And, and we needed to use Cassandra, uh, but we had to invest an inordinate amount of time getting that up and running, getting it, you know, ready, getting it in production, kind of usable manner. Um, and, and that was just a huge time killer for, for a, huge, a, a little startup like us. Um, mm. But we had to make the investment and we did. And, and we quickly saw that, hey, everything that we did may be more applicable to a broader market, right? We very quickly, you know, kind of pivoted in that direction um, and started providing capability around that. Um, so that, mm. was, that was kind of how we got started. But but that were the things that kind of drew us to, um, you know, Cassandra in the, fir in, in the first place. And so it wasn't just those properties as well as it was, you know, seeing how attractive those properties were to other companies that were solving similar problems you know most of them at a far greater scale than we were so you know yeah. the netflixes and apples and um you know those kind of things um but you know seeing uh that it could solve those challenges um was was really really exciting awesome man ben well look thanks very much for your time enjoy the the sunny christchurch weather you're in and um remember everyone to always be clustering <laughs>